So we're going to have a look at how we can encode from text into a binary format or a format which can be transmitted uh, over uh, a communication channel. Okay, so the standard methods that uh, we, we normally use is to take uh, a representation of our character set. So in English, in English language, this is often ASCII characters. These are standard 7-bit characters which have been used f for many years and represent a standard mapping of the binary value to uh, a character. We also have hexadecimal format, decimal, octal and also an HTML format if we need to use it in HTML. So for example a capital A is a 65 in decimal, a 1000001 or 41 as a hexadecimal, 101 as octal and 65 as an HTML tag. So anything that's encoded in this, uh, using this uh, encoding system table will uh, hopefully be represented in a standard format. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So what we have is that we will convert uh, into uh, our binary value and ASK is 7 bit. Uh, we can also have an 8 bit format and a 16 bit format. So in 16 bits, we can represent many more characters than we can with a 7 bit or a, or a 8 bit format. So sometimes our 8 bit values are stored in 16 bit values. So the UTF 16 character set maps the standard ASCII character, so if we look at an A we'll actually find that the lower 8 bits are what we've seen before 65, 41, 101 uh, but we now have an extra 8 values so if you're searching on a disk for uh, characters sometimes you've got to make sure that you set search for the 16 bit value also but what we can see from uh, the UTF-16 is that we get many more characters, in fact 2 to the power of 16 characters and that allows us to have lots of different character sets and and so on. And you can browse through that and see all the different characters that are actually valuable. And the two ways it's difficult for us to really represent things in binary, to write them down or to, to communicate them. So the two main ways that we use to represent binary values are in hexadecimal or in base 64. And a major problem that we have is, th is th when, when we convert into a cipher stream, we often have non-printable characters. So the non-printable characters if we go back to our table, we can see here when the computer has tried to print the characters from 0 to 32, and there is no character there because it's a non-printing character. It could be a control character and so on. These characters from 33, right the way up there to 127. are printable ones. And we can see these are the non these are non printing ones too. So obviously when we look at our cipher stream if we want to display it or pass it as a value, it's very difficult for us to represent it in a, with a character which is printable and obviously displayable in something like an email message or a text editor. Okay, so it's fairly simple. The reason we use hexadecimal is that we don't really have to count up too much to too much to be able to convert a value. 
basically we take four bits at a time, we look up our table and we find the value. In this case we have one, a two, a four and an eight for each one. So in this case we have five and this is a two, a four and an eight which gives us 12, 14, 14 is an E and so on. So you can see there here it's fairly easy for us to convert between our hex value into binary and vice versa. The other formats that's used to, to be able to uh, send binary information uh, as a, in a text format is to use B64. With this we'll take our bytes together and then we'll split them into sequences of six bits at a time. For each of these six bits, we basically look up the table to find uh, an equivalent value. So in this case, we have a 1, 2, 4, an 8, and a 16, which gives us 24, 25. We then look up the table, and in this case, 25 is a Z, and so on. Okay, so this gives us two of the most fundamental methods to be able to convert from binary into a displayable format. Okay, so if we go back to our character set for ASCII, we should be able to see the equivalent values here. So if we take an example such as this one here, okay, so that's a 1 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. This is a 32 here, and a 1, which gives us 33. As we've seen with hex, we split the byte into four bits. So, that, so 0, 0, 0, 1 represents a 1, and then this part here represents a 2. In octal, we take three bits at a time. So this represents a 1, this represents a 4, and this represents a zero, so we get 41 uh, there. Okay, so our exclamation mark can be represented in any of these formats. So let's look at an example here. So that here is our capital A, and we've seen before that a capital A re is represented by a 41. When we represent this as a bit stream, this is uh, what we get. And with B64 what happens is that we pad with uh, some zeros to be able to get uh, a, an equal number of six bits. Okay, so we can take a message and then we can convert it into its hex, its hex format. So this should be 66 for an F, 72 for an R and, and so on. This gives us our bit stream, and then we can convert that into our base 64 format. We can also have a look to see uh, how we convert. So if we take a 12, 12 is a C in hexadecimal, a 14 in octal, and 1100 in binary. So this should give us the, the basic conversion table here, and you can try out an example just by clicking on this link here. Okay, so that's given us a basic overview of ASCII, UTF-16, B64, binary, hexadecimal, octal, and so on.